we bring into uh, the uh, post-game show here at the Island Saving Center, Kings assistant coach Brock Sawyer. And uh, last night we talked about a, a game that lacked puck hunger, a game that lacked tenacity from Powell River. And I think a, a lot of the things you could say about last night's game, you could also probably factor in for this evening as well. Oh, for sure. I mean, uh, way too many... Way too many passengers tonight on the bus and uh, not enough guys, um, you know, willing to, to get in there on the forecheck and, and, and hit and lay bodies and win puck battles. I mean, it's, uh, you know, same same result as last night and uh, relatively same effort. You look at the first period, and we talked about uh, this with Kent Lewis in the pregame show. It's tough playing catch-up. You did it on the scoreboard tonight, but too many times over the last few games, the Kings have been playing catch-up shots on goal, and I know that's an area that really can dictate success for this hockey club, the number of chances that they're generating on opposition nets. Well, exactly. I mean, we're just, you know, not willing to go to the dirty areas to score. I mean, I think, uh, you know, you and I were talking earlier in the day in the hotel there and said about, you know, out of our 45 goals, about 40, mm -hmm. you know, 35 to 40 of them have just been jam plays, greasy plays, guys going to the net to score. And, I mean, hey, uh, you know, guys like Dave Anderchuk made a living banging pucks in front of the net in the NHL. And, uh, you you got you to gotta pay the price to get to the front of the net and be willing to uh, to take a shot in order to get the puck in the back and um, back of the net, and we haven't been doing that. Second period certainly was a little bit better off off the hop. There was a bit of a trend upwards, but it just, again, that puck hunger uh, just wasn't there. I did want to touch on a, a couple of plays there. I thought um, Jake Kohlhauser uh, was, was very good, uh, maybe the best of a bad bunch tonight, obviously. Uh, tough night for the Kings, but he showed well on a pairing with Ryland Ball. No, he's, uh, you know, he's come in here and he's, he's been pretty solid for us. I mean, I'm happy with his play, obviously, you know, coming down from the Western League, bit of an adjustment, but uh, no, he's he, he's got all the tools. He skates well for his size. Mm -hmm. He's getting more confidence every day, handling the puck and shooting and uh, starting to get power play time and, you know, logs a lot of minutes and, you know, he, he was good tonight. Very uh, consistent, I thought. Tough night for Jeff Smith. Uh, certainly would uh, desperately want that first one back, was hugging the post. Somehow there's a hole there. Obviously the uh, shorty there at the second uh, end of the second period uh, thought he had the glove but uh, just beat him clean. Uh, but as we were saying, yeah, it might not be Jeff Smith's most sparkling performance, but you're not going to win hockey games without scoring. No, exactly. You can't win if you can't score. And, I mean, it's, you know, obviously the first one, a little bit of a, a softy on him, and you know he wants that one back and the breakaway goal. But, I mean, that just happens when you play teams who are jacked up to play. I mean, when you're at the top of the standings, like I said last night, teams, you got a target on your back, and teams are, are amping up, gearing up to play you. So, um, you know, we gotta we got to go back and do some soul searching and realize that, like, if we're as good as we think we are, we need to bring a, a solid effort. I mean, we've had some great outings this this year and obviously some uh, some pretty lackluster ones. So um, it's, you know, it's I know it's painful to watch, but, uh, you know, a little bit of video and some hard practices this week and we'll get back to it. The uh, additions of Curtis McCarrick and, and Mitchell Hawes certainly welcome back to the lineup. Both the guys, veterans at the junior level. McCarrick in his third year. How did you think they did through their first 60 minutes? Particularly McCarrick. He's been out about three weeks now. No, Curtis obviously, you know, been uh, a little limped up there, but uh, came back tonight. I thought he did a great job. I mean, you know, obviously skating's a bit limited, but, um, you know, he, he, he's good with the puck. He's tough on walls. I mean, he was hungry down low. He was... You know, he gave us everything he could for, for 60 minutes. And same thing with Hazi, you know, battling a uh, lower body injury and, and just, you know, gutted it out and, uh, as best he could until finally it was like, in the last three minutes and he just looked and said, like, I'm, you know, I'm in a lot of pain and I just can't. And, I mean, you know, he can't fault him. But, uh, no, I thought they, they came in and contributed in, in the best way they could. And I thought, uh, you know, Hazi on that line with uh, Rouser and Protopoulos and then even Curdy moving up there to the third, or the top line in the third and yeah. generating some chances. So, um you know, they came in and, uh, you know, fit back right back in where they belong. Did you feel you missed Nick Collision tonight, that Spock, that energy that he brings? Uh, a little bit, but, I mean, you know, when you have guys out of out of the lineup, other guys have to uh, realize it and, and step up. I mean, you have a lot of guys who want to go up into the top six and play top six minutes mm -hmm. and kill penalties and play power play, but uh, at the same time, that stuff's just not handed out. That's earned, so... Um, you, you miss his, his tenacity and you miss his energy and, and, and that fire that he plays with, obviously. But uh, you, you hope when, you know, top guys are out that other guys do step up. And uh, like I said, just too many passengers tonight. You uh, Something that we've, we've heard a lot about over the last couple of weeks is, is teams getting Jack to play the Kings. Teams putting out their best effort. I think we saw that last night in Victoria. We saw a very good effort out of Cowich and here tonight coming in to play a team that's currently leading the division, although Cowich and, uh, in a good spot right now with some games in hand. You hope that's reflected coming up next week because the Kings will go up against the best the BCHL has to offer, at least right now, with the, with the league-leading Penticton Vs. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, uh, 
you know, it'll be a tough week of practice here, obviously preparing for Penticton. But, um, you know, I think it, it, a lot of it's just us. It's not systems. It's not, uh, it, it, it's not, you know, teams, it's not teams are beating us. It's we're just, we're beating ourselves by not bringing a good effort. We're, mm -hmm. We're slow to react. We're not hungry on pucks. We're not physical. We're getting out muscled. We're losing puck battles. I think that's that's the biggest thing that that's hurt us over the last couple of games. And we've been lucky to only drop two of our last, I think, you know, five or six. Mm -hmm. So, um, but uh, no, it's it's something that we definitely need to address and and get and get hungrier and and know that every game is going to be a dogfight because when you're like I keep saying it, we're at the top. Maybe we shouldn't be at the top, um, but you know that'd be taken away too much from from what the guys have earned so far but yeah. i mean at, at the end of the day it's you got to bring it every night and th that's pretty much all you can say yeah it's tough to win 58 games in this league there's bound to be speed bumps along the way and i think i hope i'm not breaking the fourth wall here but i think i heard on the bus the other day it's like you know you you don't go through a season and you, and you don't go through a season without adversity and i think it was a baseball analogy it's like you don't become a pro ball player without uh, hitting a, a few curveballs no one so. yeah when no one life throws you the curve yeah, you gotta you hit it so be able to smack it out uh, of the pot, no so. i mean it's you know it is what it is i mean it's obviously it's early and we can address it and, and it's nice that you know this is happening earlier in the season and not into january and february yeah. when you're into the playoff push so um i mean yeah losing sucks but it's uh it's, it's also a learning curve so i think uh you know we, we just go back go back home tomorrow get get off the ferry and and uh you know address the situation with some hard practices and mm -hmm. and, and get back to basics i mean obviously our systems haven't been very good our, our effort just our care yeah i mean it's uh it, it's pretty easy just to think you're in the right position but to uh to really execute you got to be you know mental and then mentally ready and then physically ready for a game so um we've lacked a bit of both recently so obviously we need to address that and, and get back and i mean friday's not going to be any easier no Brock, I appreciate you coming up here and doing this. We'll do it again back at home on Friday. Yeah, definitely. Just want to, you know, say hi to all the guys down at the mill listening on Coast <laughs> FM tonight. So thank you for everybody for tuning in. Uh, actually, sorry, before we let you go, and I did this last night as well, uh, Kent Lewis, his 1,000th uh, game. You sent out a tweet before the game. You now work as an assistant coach alongside him. You, you've been there as a player. We've seen people retweet, comment on Facebook about legacy is a strong word, but it really is a legacy over a thousand games in Powell River dating back to 1990. Um, this program is Kent Lewis, and I think Kent Lewis is this program. No, I mean, he's, at the end of the day, he's the backbone of the program, and I mean, he's, uh, you know, from a player standpoint, having played for him, it, it, it was probably one of the funnest years of my life mm -hmm. um, as a 20-year-old, and, uh, you know, very, very, a straight shooter and a very honest guy. Um, gives you gives you his heart and soul whether it's every day in practice or behind the bench i mean he's he's got your back as a coach and um you know that's obviously one of, one of the main reasons when he uh, you know talked to me if, to come coach and um it was kind of a no-brainer for me to come back yeah. here to coach just the you know the legacy the the um connections the um what is the word i'm looking for here <laughs> Just, you know, everything about him, the yeah. way he conducts himself, the way he runs this program, the the time and effort he puts in. I mean, I know his, his, his kids suffer a little bit for it, but, I mean, his... I mean, there's so, been so many guys who've played for him yeah. that I think have reached out today, and I, I know I know it's not the effort and the result that he wanted tonight, but it's uh, you know I know he feels the appreciation for a thousand games in this program, and it, he's just a, a great guy and, and, a, and a pleasure to play for and a, and a, and a joy to work with day in and day out. Brock, thank you very much for coming up and doing this. Appreciate it. Thank you.